Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Today's video features true Halloween horror stories. You could really call it being in the wrong place at the wrong time. October 31st holds lots of mystique, and there's so much surrounding this night. All Hallows Eve. Sit back, relax, and stay sinful. In 1992, a 16-year-old Japanese foreign exchange student in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, paid the ultimate price after accidentally ringing the wrong doorbell on his way to a Halloween party. Yoshihiro Hattori had been unfamiliar with the neighborhood when he and a friend arrived at the home of Rodney Pierce, a nearby neighbor who opened the door armed with a 44 Magnum revolver. Although Hattori allegedly said, we're here for the party, Pierce claimed he feared for his life and ordered the student to freeze. When Hattori misunderstood the command and kept approaching, Pierce shot him. After being questioned, the perpetrator was arrested but later acquitted of manslaughter. It's unknown what kind of Halloween costume Hattori wore to warrant such a reaction. Famed magician Harry Houdini claimed he could take a blow to the abdomen without being taken down. And on October 22, 1926, a student at McGill University asked if he could prove it. Houdini, who had been sitting in his dressing room during an engagement at the Montreal University, gladly obliged. Although he had allegedly braced himself, the student's four punches left the performer in great pain. After suffering for two days, Houdini decided to seek medical help, but by the time he was suffering from a severe fever and acute appendicitis. Defying doctor's orders, he performed instead of undergoing the recommended surgery. When the curtains closed, the magician collapsed. Despite having his appendix removed afterward, Houdini passed away on Halloween, surrounded by his family. On Halloween Day in 1963, the Indiana State Fair held a Holidays on Ice skating exhibition for a crowd of hundreds. The grand finale was not what anyone had expected. Unbeknownst to the organizers at the Indiana State Fairgrounds Coliseum, propane gas had been leaking from a nearby tank into the poorly ventilated room. During a final act called Mardi Gras, the propane gas caught fire, leading to a horrific explosion that propelled onlookers from their chairs. The death toll was 74, and 400 additional people were injured. The tradition of throwing eggs on Halloween is at its best a harmless prank. At worst, it can turn deadly. That was the case for Carl Jackson, a 21-year-old data entry clerk at Morgan Stanley, who usually never left the house on Halloween, as they thought it was dangerous. On October 31, 1995, his worst fear became a reality, reports the New York Times. Jackson had decided to venture out to pick up his girlfriend's son from a party. Along the way, a group of teens pelted his car with eggs, so Jackson got out to confront them. But as he was getting back into his car, one of the pranksters pulled a gun and fatally shot him in the head. To this day, no one knows what happened to Haiyan Jung Cindy Song, a 39-year-old grad student at Penn State University who disappeared without a trace after leaving a Halloween party after midnight in 2001. Song had stopped by a friend's house in the early morning hours, still decked out in her bunny costume, and accepted a lift home at 4 a.m. Slightly intoxicated, she managed to get inside her home and drop off her belongings, including her backpack and cell phone. She'd even removed her false eyelashes, but Song herself was never seen again. Investigators found no evidence of foul play and no activity on her credit cards or cell phone. The case eventually went cold. David Berkowitz became infamous in the 1970s as the son of Sam serial killer. Not many people know that he could also predict the future. Well, sort of. 
Berkowitz was incarcerated when 39-year-old Ronald Sisman and 20-year-old Elizabeth Platzman were beaten and shot to death in their Manhattan home in the early hours of Halloween in 1981. A fellow prisoner claimed that the son of Sam had previously told him that a cult was planning out to carry out the massacre. Berkowitz was allegedly even able to describe the victim's apartment to a T, but police didn't have enough evidence to charge him with involvement in the murders, which remain unsolved. If there was a prize for the most morbid Halloween decoration in Frederica, Delaware in 2005, it would have gone to the body hanging from a tree. It would have beaten out the fake witches, skeletons, and jack-o'-lanterns dotting the neighborhood. For hours, people passed by admiring it. Of course, it had an edge over the other decorations. This was a real body. Police believe it was that of a woman who had committed suicide the night before. Not everyone's wearing a costume on Halloween. In 2012, in the early hours of the morning after Halloween, a 2-2 clad marine spotted a uniformed clad man in a wheelchair and thought the man's costume was a weak attempt at mocking the military. So he attacked the man. As the marine learned upon his arrest, the man's wardrobe was not a comment on our servicemen and women. He was in fact a disabled veteran. It's every parent's nightmare. Your child comes home from a night of trick-or-treating with spiked candy. One of the Halloween stories that helped propel this fear was the murder of Timothy O'Brien in 1974. The eight-year-old from Deer Park, Texas died Halloween night after ingesting poison candy. Making this crime more horrific is the fact that the perpetrator was not a neighbor, but the boy's own father, who sought to cash in on his son's life insurance. The most frightening thing about the graveyard kit an Oregon woman bought at Kmart in 2012 was a note she found inside. It was written by a Chinese factory worker who claimed he and others were tortured and enslaved in a forced labor camp, making toys 15 hours a day with no pay or days off. He went on to plead for the letter to be forwarded to the World Human Rights Organization. The woman did just that and the Chinese worker was freed when the camp was exposed months later. It's bad enough to have collapsed and died alone on your own porch steps, but adding insult to injury, the morning after this 2012 Halloween tragedy, the mailman, assuming the body was an excellent decoration, sidestepped the deceased on his way to delivering the corpse's mail. The year was 1957, Halloween night. A couple was getting ready for bed when the doorbell rang. It was late, but the husband answered the door, ready to dole out more candy. Instead, an adult wearing a mask shot him in the chest, killing him. Was it a trick-or-treater dissatisfied with the candy selection? Not quite. The murderer, it turns out, was the girlfriend of a woman who had had an affair with the murdered man's wife. The woman convinced her girlfriend to do away with the husband in order to have the wife for herself. Candy might be important, but it's certainly not worth your life. It was Halloween night 2011 when a 55-year-old Chicago resident realized his candy bag was missing. He blamed a neighbor for the missing sweets and took his revenge to an extreme, stabbing her to death with several steak knives. On Halloween Day in 1955, Marilyn Damon went to a food fair on Long Island to do some shopping. She brought her children, two-year-old Stephen and seven-month-old Pamela. Telling Stephen to be good and watch his little sister, she left the children outside while she went into the store. She returned ten minutes later to find that her children had disappeared, stroller and all. Pamela's baby stroller with the unharmed seven-month-old inside was found a short distance away, but Long Island police were never able to locate Stephen. What happened to him remains a mystery. People thinking dead bodies are Halloween decorations seems to be a gruesome trend in these Halloween stories. However, in 2017, 
the opposite actually happened. In mid-September, police in Greene County, Tennessee, received a panicked phone call from a man who believed there was a beheaded corpse in his neighbor's driveway. Police arrived on the scene only to find that the owner of the home had actually just put out his creepy Halloween display a little early. Do not call 911 reporting a dead body. The police department's Facebook page wrote, instead congratulate the homeowner on a great display. This happened back when I was a teenager. For some background, I'm female and was 16 at the time. My parents went out of town and let me have a sleepover with some friends. We'll call them Nikki and Ed. We decided to stay in for Halloween and just binge watch horror films and pass out candy. We got a few trick-or-treaters, but not very many, as we lived on the rough side of town. Fast forward to the darker hours, around 12 or 1 a.m., and we were still in movie mode, having had ordered pizza and wired up with a big bowl of candy. Suddenly, there were three loud bangs coming from the front door. It almost sounded like they were kicking it. I smiled at my friends since they were all shaken and said, Relax, guys. It's probably some late-night trick-or-treaters. Boy, was I wrong. I go to the door and open just a smidge with my foot behind the door and I look up to see two large men in creepy masks. One of them says to me, Trick or treat. At first I'm thinking, ha, that's very funny guys, believing it to be a couple of pranksters. I laugh uncomfortably and ask where their candy bag is. I know, I know, naive me thinking they were here for candy. Suddenly one of them tries to push the door open, but luckily I had my foot behind it and I yelled to my friends to come help me close the door. Ed jumps up and slams one of the men's fingers as we fight to close the door. When closed, we instantly locked it. A few more bangs on the door and then silence. You would think that would be the end of it, right? But no. Sadly for us, we didn't call the cops after and resumed to watching the movie after we calmed down. An hour or so passes and we hear a crashing noise upstairs. You guessed it. It was the same masked men now breaking in from my sister's room. She had a balcony that had a ladder on the side for easier access. Ed bravely grabbed a bat we had by the door and headed up to check it out, while me and Nikki stayed right behind him phoning officers. Once we rounded the corner upstairs into what was my youngest sister's room, Ed swings the bat like a madman and ends up connecting with the intruder. He stumbles and the other stands there begging not to be hit. A little after officers arrived and took both men away. It's safe to say they were not here to trick or treat. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for future content. Please be sure to send in your true scary stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com. I need stories year-round, every day, every week, every month. I need stories, guys. I don't want our channel to grow stagnant. I want it to be fresh and upbeat. Until we meet again, stay sinful.